Good morning. How are you today? Well, it's another cold one, but the sun makes you think it's warmer. <laughs> it's sort of a, a helpful delusion when you're uh, walking on a cold day. Uh, the politics is such that uh, don't you feel a little more relief each day when you think what Trump says doesn't matter at all and that he's getting his head pounded against the wall, losing all these uh, votes and all these crazy efforts to upend and usurp our electoral system? So we start coming to the point where, as we watch the people run out the door, <laughs> including his uh, Dr. Atlas, who did such a terrible job, no job at all, really, fighting the pandemic. And, uh, but he still has his minions out there running around desperately looking for some way to save him in the White House. And I think one of the reasons is, uh, what does this man do when he leaves office? And as a result, we see a lot of discussion about the pardon power. And the pardon power in Article 2 of the Constitution is pretty interesting. It basically seems to say you have a power to do whatever you want in terms of a pardon. But documents have to be read in whole, and that is to say what else may limit them. First of all, the uh, pardon power excludes impeachment. <laughs> so he will forever have remained impeached, and it will never be removed as a stain, a, a righteous stain, from who he is, what he's done, what he's failed to do. So let's go back to the pardon. You know, the old Anglo-Saxon rule that I've noticed uh, before in conversations in the various ways I try to talk about these things is that uh, a judge uh, cannot be a judge in his own matter, meaning if he has a stake in it. So the notion that Trump can pardon himself or pardon his confederates, or pardon his family. All of those are anathema to the notion of what is procedural due process, that is fundamental fairness. <clears throat> so he can't, oh well, let's put it this way, he may not, it is impermissible, it is wrong. And <clears throat> I just did a short note uh, I put up on Twitter about uh, how the Department of Justice, when pr uh, Nixon, was considering his options, wrote an opinion about whether or not Nixon could pardon himself. And they basically decided he couldn't for the principle I just said. So what do we have with Trump now? Well, we have Sean Hannity saying he, sh he Trump, should pardon himself and his family. <laughs> uh, there are a couple of problems with that. But let's, let's, let's assume, which I think is correct, uh, the law that he may not pardon himself or his family because he has a stake in the outcome and that that is a violation of due process which is also in our constitution and any expression of power is abusive in my opinion if it contravenes another proposition in the constitution okay all that's english to say it would be an abuse of power but everybody who states this opinion ignores, so how do we enforce it? Well, we could wait until he was indicted in a, for a federal crime, because it's only federal crimes the pardon applies to. And uh, he would have say, I was pardoned, and then we would challenge it in court. Well, that could be down the road and might never happen. Uh, number two, we could seek what they call a declaratory judgment action. Declare the pardon is void because of the reasons I've said. And then it ends up before the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court right now is pretty political. So they probably find a way to protect the president and say there was no limitation on the presidential pardon, which would be bad law and good Republican politics, I suppose. But consider the fact that Trump has to implicitly admit that he committed a crime to accept the pardon. So will he do that? I don't know. My view about what you do with the pardon is uh, if he gets a pardon from himself to himself, because I don't see Pence uh, uh, giving him a pardon, and I don't see Trump resigning so that Pence can give him a pardon, uh, it strikes me that then Trump is not protected by the Fifth Amendment in any federal proceeding, grand jury, 
uh, court, hearing, Congress, because the Fifth Amendment is that you may not be a witness against yourself in a criminal proceeding, but he is no longer fearful of, quote, punishment in a criminal proceeding. So he has no Fifth Amendment right, and he could be compelled <laughs> to testify about any number of legitimate subjects. Uh, that's my take on it. But I do like the drift of the conversation now. We're talking about what do we do about Trump's misconduct in office when he leaves office as of January the 20th. And I'm hoping no matter what, New York goes forward with the attorney general on the civil uh, penalties that she's seeking and that the uh, DA from Manhattan, uh, Vance, goes forward with his criminal actions. And everybody in America who has a civil suit against this guy <laughs> should do it. And uh, we should watch and wait and see if justice survives him leaving office. And by that I mean that people who do things such as this, they shouldn't get a free ride because otherwise the law means nothing. The Constitution means nothing. And we know that Trump feels that way, but that cannot be the order in America for the Constitution, the laws of the land, even the demeanor of a public official such as the president. So get out, be chilly. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.